Hi, this is Luke May. I'm going to start the lecture on interacting with Linux systems. Um, so for the majority of this course, CS151, we're going to be using the Indiana State University's CS server. I've emailed you all username and passwords, so you should all have access. Um, and there's a how-to login um, section of the website under supplemental materials and tutorials. So you should all have hopefully looked at that. Um, it's got uh, instructions on how to log in for the three you know, primary operating systems, Linux, Mac, and Windows. If you're using Windows, you have to install a, another program called PuTTY. So if you haven't taken a look at that, take a look at that. Um, and we're just going to go ahead and dive in. And I'll log in with my account. <clears throat> so I'm going to have uh, a student account as well, my username for this course is going to be CS15100. You guys all have username CS151 and then two numbers, mine 00, so you can always find any information uh, or any files that I make during the course of a lecture should be in that directory and you can you know look at those, copy those, whatever you want to do. Um, so first I'm going to SSH which is secure shell. That's going to allow me to securely log into the CS server. So I'm going to log in as my student account, CS15100, at the server, which is cs.indstate.edu. And then I've typed in the password. Make sure I get this right. There we go. Okay, so the first time you log in, uh, <clears throat> you get the, this little message, the little quotes at the beginning. Um, this part happens only the first time you log in. Uh, you have to set your finger information. That's basically just your name, your identification information. Um, but it automatically, the first time you log in, it wants you to change your password right away. So this first time you're prompted for the password, it's the password you just entered. So type that in. You notice on Linux when you type a password, uh, there are no um, characters that show up that blank out your password. Uh, it's just absolutely blank every time you press a character. So that's normal, that's fine. Uh, you just go ahead and type your password and press enter. Okay, changing the user information. Um, so here you just type in your full name and press enter and then press enter for the rest of the items okay so oh I guess that was for uh, your finger information so you're, you're going to want to change your password as soon as you get in here so <clears throat> the command to do that is passwd password and so you type in the old password and then your new password. Okay, so now you should have a password that you can remember uh, <clears throat> and you need to make sure that is something you can remember. If you need to, we can blow away your password and give you a new one, but try to remember it. Okay, so now I'm logged in. Here at the prompt is my username I'm at the CS server, and then this is the, the directory structure of my current location. That's the path to my current location. So right now, I'm in my home folder. Okay. So if I type CD, that is change directory. It allows you to change what location you are uh, currently viewing in the terminal. So if I do the tilde, that's my home directory. Wherever I am, it will take me back to this directory that I'm currently in. Okay. Notice it says the exact same thing. U1 class and then my username. For you guys, it'll say your username. So if I change directories, dot dot slash will take me up one level. Notice it changed. I'm no longer in my home directory. I'm in slash U1 slash class. If I type ls to see what's in here, that lists the contents of the directory. 
So these are all you guys' class accounts. So I'm listing them out. First one is me, CS15100. I can type CD, CS15100. The CD is change directory. Okay, that will take me again back home. Go up one directory, CD dot dot slash, back to where I was, CD dot dot slash, up one more. Now here I can show you that CD tilde takes you home. So if I press CD tilde, it always takes me home. And it's handy to have. Okay, so this is really common directory structure. Directories, you should know, are the same thing as file or uh, folders. So uh, before folders were a thing, they were called directories. And then later they started calling directories folders, and so there's been some confusion about that. Uh, Microsoft and Mac and a lot of operating systems like to make things uh, seem easier for the user and um, for the most part they do but then it adds uh, some frustrations when you actually start understanding how things really work so there's some different naming and, and stuff that goes on so what's important to think to know about is uh, directories are the same as folders for all practical purposes so on my desktop here I can show you that better I can create a new folder. Now this is just on my local machine. I'm no longer anything that I do with the, the, the graphical user interface is just my local machine. So I can create a folder called my folder. You see it shows up on my desktop. I can make a new tab. So this is a terminal. Uh, this is on my local machine. See the tilde? That means my home folder. I can change directories to my desktop and if I type ls that lists out the contents of that directory. So desktop you see has the dev folder junk, ISU, this to do text file and this new uh, my, my folder that I just created. I don't know why that's stuck there. Okay, so if I cd into my folder if I type ls, there's nothing in it because I just opened it. If I double click on it, you see we have uh, the graphical user interface. This is the folder I'm in. I can create a file here, uh, an empty document. I'll rename it empty.txt. I call it .txt because I want it to be a text file. That's the extension of the file. Um, you don't have to have the extension to make it a text file but it just helps you when you're looking at files. If you see .txt, you know it's a text file. You might have images that are JPEG, PNG, uh, GIFs, any of those things. Um, you know, all sorts of file extensions, but that's the, the period and then the letters after the period. Okay, so now if I go back to the terminal, I can type ls and you'll see the empty exists there now. That's because I created it in the graphical user interface of the operating system. So basically this graphical user interface, this GUI, is a different way of doing all the things we're going to be doing in the terminal. So when computers first came out, there wasn't anything graphical, it was just all text-based. So everything that was done, navigating the file structures, was done with text. So that's it's important to learn that because you can, um, there's a lot of things that are really nice about the terminal when it comes to computer programming, you can do a lot of things much faster in the terminal than you can with uh, the graphical user interface. So so here I'm in this folder listing it out empty so I can copy this folder with the cp command. That allows me to copy the name of some file. So in this case I'm going to copy this empty file. That's the first argument. The command is copy. This is an argument that's user supplied data uh, to the command and then there's a second argument which is user supplied data and I'm going to call it uh, file2.txt when I press enter I see immediately over here file2 is created if I type ls I see it so I can copy file2 and if I hit tab it auto completes things that are in the current directory. So if I type F and hit tab, it fills out file 2 because that's the only thing that starts with an F. So I'm going to make a new thing that starts with an F file 
txt. Press enter. Sure enough, it shows up over there. Okay. So I can also create directories or folders. Now remember, directory is the older term for it. It's the original term. So the command is make dir, mkdir. And the directory that I want to make is my folder. You see over here, my folder. Now let's say I want to move all these files into my folder. So I can move uh, file2.txt into my folder. Okay, see it went away. Look in here, there's file2. Now let's say I want to move uh, also, real quick, if you press up or down <clears throat> at the command line when you haven't typed anything in, it shows your last command. So you, that's helpful. Sometimes you can look back and see what you typed in. Okay. So let's see what I have in here. List the contents. Okay, I have empty and file three, and then my folder. So let's move file three into my folder, but let's rename it file one. Okay. So I'm going to move the file. I'm going to move file. Three. That's the first argument to the command, and I'm going to move it to my folder slash file one dot txt. Okay, so this is a path to a file. It's a it's a folder, a slash, and then any number of other folders followed by slashes, and then the file name. Okay, so that's that's called a path to a file. So as soon as I press enter, and here we were in my folder, and we see file one appear. If we go back up to this folder, uh, we see the file disappear. Okay. So <clears throat> it's a little bit confusing, right? I've got my folder, my folder. So let's rename one of those. Um, let's cd to my home directory slash desktop and see what's on here okay so this is dev ISU junk my folder so that's this is this folder so I'm gonna rename that one I can rename it using the move command so I want to move my folder to um, to test so I'm gonna rename the folder to test there you see it moved we cd into test we do an ls to list there's all our stuff I can ls and look and see what's in my folder and there's our files so cd changes your working directory and you'll see that reflected here if we go back to ISU this is back logged in see I have a desktop directory there I can make a directory uh, homework 2 because we're going to have a homework 2. So I can type ls and I see homework 2 and it's highlighted because it's a directory. Okay, so that's basically the, the, the key thing with the directory structure is that folders are the same as directories. It, a lot of people get hung up on that. All right. So let's just go ahead and delete that. All right, <clears throat> so we're we're back on the ISU server. All right, so again, there are some shortcuts we need to know about. The tilde is home. If I uh, <clears throat> change directories to dot slash, that means this current directory. It means whatever folder I'm in. It doesn't seem immediately useful now, but it will come up later. You need to know that dot slash means whatever directory you're currently in. Okay. If I cd dot dot slash, instead of that being the directory you're in, it's the, the parent directory. So you go up one level. When I press enter, you'll see that reflected in my path here. Slash u1 slash class. Okay. I can go cd tilde back home. Alright. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, Linux is case sensitive. So that means um, 
I can make files that are named the same thing, but they have different capital letters in different places. So um, <clears throat> I can show you that by creating a, a file the quickest way in Linux is with the echo command. So if you use the echo command, it basically outputs whatever you type in quotes to the terminal. See, file text, file text, whatever I type in there comes out. If I use a greater than symbol, that's going to pipe the output of this command to a file instead of putting it to the terminal. Okay, so here we're going to do file1.txt. Notice we don't it didn't say file text is here underneath here because that output instead of coming to the terminal, it went into that file. And if I type ls I see file1.txt. So there's a command cat, which stands for concatenate. Uh, that will let you see the contents of a file. So let me see what's in there. So I can copy file1 to file2.txt. And then I can cat file one. And then I can cat file two. And you see they both have the same text. Okay, I can overwrite file two. by doing the same thing again with the greater than symbol. So I'm echoing file2 stuff. If I don't use the greater than symbol, that just goes right to the command line. If I use the greater than symbol and specify a file or a new file, now it should be overwritten. Cat file1. That's the old one. Cat file2. That's the new one, okay? So case sensitive means <clears throat> I can have two files that are named file2. So I can copy file2 to capital F file2. If I type ls, see they're all there. File2 with lowercase, capital file2, okay? So that can get confusing. So generally in Linux systems, um, you start out a naming convention um, that's uh, camel case, which is you start out lowercase and for every word of the file name, you capitalize it. So here is the name of a file. This is camel case. That wasn't a command, so I got an error, command not found. That was just a file I wanted to create. So instead of doing that, I want to echo camel case. Use the greater than symbol. And I can say here is the name of a file, camel case. Alright, so there's one other way you can use the echo command to um, not create files, but you can add additional lines onto a file. So if I were to say another line, instead of using one greater than some uh, sign, I use two. And here's the name of a text file. And if I cat, here's the name of a text file. We see both lines are in there. And I can keep doing that. Do that a bunch of times. See, starts out with camel case, then another line, another line, another line. Okay, so those, that's an easy way to create a file or add lines to a file. Uh, and that's also uh, shows you what case sensitivity is. So we've gone over the echo command, which basically echoes whatever you type. There are 
uh, variables uh, in the shell, in the terminal shell. Um, and echo allows you to see what those are too. So I can see uh, what my path is, for example. I can see uh, what my home folder is with echo. Um, and I can see what user I am, CS151. So I can also add some other stuff if, if I surround the whole thing in quotes. Uh, so there you go. A uh, little make you feel better about yourself right there. All right. So we got echo um, ls, which is list, stands for list. Um, print working directory is the pwd command. So that tells you what directory you're in. You're in basically uh, most of the time you'll see it right here, but if you get really deep in the directory structure, that gets uh, cut off sometimes. And if you want to know where you are, um, use the print working directory command pwd. So I can see slash. That's the root of the file system. You can see what's in the root. And we've got interesting stuff here. U1, there we go. CD slash U1. That's where all the user accounts are. And in class, that's where all you guys are. No print working directory slash U1 slash class. All right. If you have any questions about a command, there's a command for that. So the man command is it stands for manual and uh, it will look up the manual documentation uh, for the command so if I want to know what the ls command does I can type man ls so what's the manual on the ls command so the name it lists directory contents and it tells you all the different options you can add uh, these items are called options anything that starts with a hyphen or two hyphens are usually called options and then <clears throat> anything that the user provides that's not listed as an option uh, in the man pages is an argument for the most part. Those terms are a little loose, but that's generally the case. Okay, so that's the ls command. You can man uh, any of the commands. Uh, print working directory. Print the name of the current working directory. Cat concatenate files and print on a standard output. So cat actually <clears throat> takes multiple files. So if I wanted to combine multiple files, it would print it out to the screen so I could see what it looks like. So if I CD back to my home directory, which is tilde. Unless I got these file one, file two stuff, I can do cat file one, file two, and then big file too. Yeah, maybe it only does two. Oh no, that's right. Here's the name of a file had all the other stuff. Okay. Okay. So this is all the files concatenated together. File one dot txt is that file 2 and then uppercase file 2 and then here's the name of a file contains all of that so cat concatenates all those and outputs it to your terminal display it's pretty simple um, we've got the make dir command showed you that already we made the homework 2 uh, folder so we can um, move all this stuff to homework 2 files one at a time uh, oops, to one more two. Okay, so 
So you see I cleaned up the workspace. I just have my desktop and homework two uh, directory. CD into homework two. Say I want to change the name of here's the name of a file. It's too much, so I'm gonna to rename it. You just use the move command. So I'm gonna move. Here's the name of the file to uh, we'll call it camel case. Txt. All right. So there's that. We got the cd command is change directory. We did that one. A file path we went over. Ls camel case. Camel case by itself is a file path, but it's a relative file path. If I want to know the absolute path, um, that is going to be whatever comes out of print working directory, slash, and then the name of the file. So the absolute path to camel case .txt is this. Okay, so there can be you know, an unlimited number of relative paths because the relative path just depends on where you are. And you can be anywhere in the file system. So your relative path can be go up to the parent, then come back down to uh, homework two, and then go to camel case. Okay, that can be a path. You can go up to the parent, and then go up to that parent, and then go to uh, CS151. Right? That's a relative path. There's a whole bunch of relative paths. Uh, and there should really only be one uh, simplified uh, absolute path. You can theoretically you can add a bunch of dot slashes wherever you want, because that just means this directory. So if I want CD. Uh, parent, I could go cat this directory, homework two, this directory, this directory, this directory, this directory, and then um, camel case. So technically, that you can do that, but it, it doesn't really do anything. Okay, <clears throat> so the file path. Everything between the slashes uh, is generally a folder or a directory. Um, <clears throat> so I showed you a quick way to create a file, but if you want to do anything more complex, uh, kind of edit the file, uh, you need to use a, an editor. And there's a text-based editor um, called Pico that we're going to use. And that will allow us to um, Uh, create a file. So you type pico, that's the name of the editor, and type in the name of the file you want to create. And I'm going to make a list. I'll call it a to do list. I like to make to do lists, keep me organized. I'll do to do.txt. Okay. So <clears throat> here you see it's kind of like a windowed interface that you're used to with the GUI in the OS. Um, the operating systems, uh, except it's all still text-based. Down at the bottom, you kind of have your menus. The little caret means control. And then, so this is control G, gets you help. All of these uh, different commands are keyboard commands. Okay, the main ones that you'll need to know is control O, stands for write out. And that means write out whatever's in this memory buffer, you write that to a file. So that's kind of like save. Okay. And then control X is exit. So things to do. Yeah. Control O, and now it's saying file name to write out. So since I started out the command with to do.txt, that's what comes up here. I can change this now though if I want. 
I can change it to my to-do list. Okay. Save file under a different name. Yes. Let's type Y and it does it. And then if I hit Control X, we're back to our command line. I'll type LS. I see my to-do, and it's the second name I gave it. Okay. So Pico my to-do. I can change this and make it a little bit nicer. Capitalize some stuff. Nice and easy. Control O saves. Right out. There we go. So that's uh, that's the better way to edit files, especially if they're large files, um, <clears throat> or a better way to create files if you're going to do anything uh, substantive with the file. All right. <clears throat> so get out of there. We've got we went over commands, arguments, our user supplied data, options are different ways for that command to operate. So the ls command, if I just type ls by itself, it just lists out the contents of the directory. If I want uh, the list to be um, itemized and give more information, I can use the dash l command. And that, instead of listing things out um, from left to right, it gives more detailed information and lists them out one at a time, one per line. Okay, so here you've got information. Uh, this is the desktop folder. These are permissions, which we'll talk about. This is the, uh, the owner. Uh, I believe this is the group. And then this is probably when it was created or, yeah, time it was last uh, modified or created. One of those, I'm not sure. So that's ls-l, but the point is dash l is an option to the command. Anything with a dash in front of it or two dashes is usually uh, an option. Anything else supplied to the command are arguments. Okay, um, so we've, went, we've gone over copying things. We've got the permissions is basically, basically the next thing we have to go over. So ls dash l is what we have right here uh, that shows us over here to the left this permission set so there's three primary uh, entities that you can place permissions on uh, you can place permissions on yourself on the group that you're a member of and you can place permissions on everyone else okay so uh, <clears throat> these first disregarding the D these first three uh, it stands for read write and execute these first three are the permissions for the owner of the file that is me that's CS15100 that username the next three permissions uh, are for the group of the file the group is class and the last three as for everyone else okay so this means that I'm the only one that has right access but people in my group can read the file and they can execute it if it's a script and everyone else can also read the file or execute it okay so <clears throat> to show you what I mean by executing a script we can create a quick script um, call it echoer we call it .sh because that's usually the extension for bash scripts. Okay, so we go. file echoer and I'm gonna I need it to be executable so 
I type ls dash l. Is it executable? It is not. So I'm going to change the uh, permissions on it. Change the mode, the access mode. So ch uh, ch mod stands for change mode. So I'm going to change the mode of access of the file to uh, I need executable mode for everyone. So I just do plus X on Echoer. Okay, so I type ls-l. I can see the permissions again. And here it turned green. And everybody has execute permissions. Here it was not green and nobody had execute permissions. Okay. So to execute the file, like echoer. Um, so this uh, <coughs> script that did execute correctly, the script is designed to pass in whatever argument, or to echo out the first three arguments you, uh, you supply it. So if I type one, two, three, you will type one, two, three. If I go back into this file, This is the first argument you supply, that's the second, and that's the third. Okay, So this gets into a little bit of bash programming. You don't need to know this, but uh, the main thing you need to know is you can make files executable. And to do that, you use the shmod command. So I'll save this. Move Echoer to homework two, and we'll call it uh, instead of Echoer, we'll call it Echo Args. And we use camel case. Sh. So I type ls. I see it's gone. I can type ls to list the contents of homework two. Ls homework two. It's in there. So let's run echo args again. So to do that, I'm in my home directory. I can execute it by typing dot slash homework two slash args. Either. There you go. Okay, so schmod changes access rights. You can also uh, change uh, read writes and uh, read accessibility and write accessibility. So what you might want to do for some of your assignments is remove uh, read accessibility from uh, your homeworks so other people can't look at your homework assignments. Okay. So let's see. We have CD number two. So here, everybody has read access. So what you want to do is you want to say, um, let's say we want to do file one. We don't want anyone to have read access to. So we can do schmod uh, other users um, remove the read flag of file one. Like ls-l again. See the read flag now is gone from file one. Okay. If I want to put it back on, uh, <coughs> that's schmod other users plus the read flag because we're adding the read flag back on file file one. Okay. You can also. Oops. So the three entities are uh, user. So you can do, you can add and execute for just the user. You can subtract the execute or whatever. Um, but there's the user, there's the group, and then there's other. Okay. And then the things you can change are read, write, and execute. So. I can change, uh, I can completely change file two 
to be um, file two to be the user. I want to add. Oops. The user I want to add execute permissions. Turned green, and I've got execute permissions now. If I want to remove that, I'll just do minus. And you can also set everything identical with schmod uh, user equals, and then you can say right, read, write, and execute if you want. If I want it to be uh, read and write, I can make uh, everyone else have read, write, execute by saying others equal read, write, execute. I'll say that's file two. Minus dash L. So other people now have read, write, and execute. So let's just put it back the way it is, the way it was, and say schmod 644.2. This is a numeric shortcut to, to set all of the, the permissions exactly the way you want to. Uh, you can look that up on your own and see how that works. But we go ls-l. And we see now I have read-write access. Everyone else has read access. OK, that's what 644 does. All right, getting close to the end here. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so something else you're going to need to know uh, is how to transfer files from the CS server to your local machine. It gets tedious working just uh, through the terminal sometimes. Uh, it's nice to be able to do it. It's important that you know it and you're going to need to know how to do it for this class, but it's really nice to be able to um, take whatever you need from the server and modify it on your local machine and then send it back. Um, so what we're going to do is <coughs> open a program called FileZilla. Uh, you can download that uh, off the web. I can probably throw up a quick little tutorial about it, uh, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, basically all you need to know is when you open it up, the host is your server, which is cs.indstate.edu. The username uh, for me would be cs15100. You type in your password, and then the port is 22. The port is a network port. It's basically a numeric address that the computer uh, expects to be communicating on. A particular program on the computer expects to be communicating on. So, uh, for example, email has a specific port. Whenever you interact with the server and deal with email, there's a specific port. When you deal with uh, a web host, web serving, um, that's port 80. So anytime there's a web server on a specific machine, that's generally point, port 80. Uh, SSH, or Secure uh, File Transfer Protocol, is 22. So that's what we're using. So the main thing to know there is a network port is just a way, it's a numeric address that uh, a particular program on the computer is expecting communication on. Okay, so it's like, Kind of like uh, your mailbox, your snail mailbox, your actual U.S. Post, post Office mailbox. You're expecting U.S. Post in that mailbox, right? You're not expecting digital pictures. That doesn't make sense. There, there, there's plenty of stuff that you're not expecting, but that's what you're expecting there is, uh, you know, U.S. Post. So you can think of it like that. Uh, in your email, you're expecting email. You have different... Uh, different communication protocols depending on you know what you're trying to do so anyway moving on we'll go to I have another account here that's uh, I'm gonna log into that and grab a file okay this is uh homework to template. So basically when it logged me in, it logged me into my home folder. 
And then I scroll down, I have the CS151 course, where I keep some stuff for this course. And <clears throat> when I select this, it shows me the contents in here. Over here is my local machine. That's this machine, the desktop over here. I can go slash home, slash Luke, and my desktop. So this is what's on my desktop. I can just drag this over here. Here we go, homework two template. I open that up. These are all the questions that are on the website. So I want you to use this template because it all has all the questions written out already. You don't have to rewrite those. And that'll be easier for me to grade. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I'm going, now that this is on my local machine, I'm going to uh, disconnect Disconnected from server. Okay, so I'm going to <clears throat> go in again, but this time as my CS151 user. Type in my password for that. Port is 22, it's the communication port, and quick connect. Alright, so that's my home folder. See, we have the homework 2 folder there. So I'm going to copy, first let's just rename this to homework two. And then I'm going to copy it here. Okay, now I'm gonna disconnect. Now I'm still logged in here. Let's change directories to my home folder ls see there it is homework two cat homework two oops dot txt there it is those are all the questions um, so what you're going to do is you're going to type the command copy dot dot slash goes up to the parent cs15100 that's my directory slash homework two dot txt and you're going to copy that to your home folder. You're going to make a directory, homework two, and you're going to copy it in there. So let me go homework two.txt. Even though it's the same name, we didn't have to do that. But anyway, so then you'll see it in your homework two folder. Homework two, right here. All right, so I answer those questions and I'll have a lab up for you soon. Um, the lab won't be uh, too terribly challenging. Um, a lot of this uh, navigating the Linux system has to be homework questions. Um, there's, there's not a whole lot of lab activities. It's just you getting familiar with the commands and how to use them. So that's why there's so many questions on this one. Um, I will have a lab though. I'll get that up this weekend. Um, Monday's Memorial Day, so you guys uh, can take that off. I'll have this due uh, probably Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, but take a look at the site, and that'll let you know when it's due. All right, guys. Have a good one.